All right, hi, babies. So we are going to take um, our summative. We're going to take our summative on Friday, um, which would be November... November 30th. So we're going to go ahead and do our review. And you have your worksheet. So the standards that we're going to review are using the trigonometric ratios and Pythagorean's theorem to solve right triangles and apply problems. Um, we're going to understand the ratios. Um, and we're going to explain and use the relationship between the sine and cosine of complementary angles. So we're going to review all three of those standards. So what you're going to learn is how to find the missing sides and missing angles of a right triangle. All of these vocab words you know already. One I want to add is very quickly Pythagorean's theorem. Which is the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And you use this when you know two sides of a right triangle and you need to find a third side. You can't use it unless you know two sides. And make sure you're careful that c is the hypotenuse and a and b are the two legs. So your work for tonight is to um, complete day five or your work for tomorrow's night is to complete day five So let's try this together. It is on your review sheet. This is the first question on your review sheet. So let's try this one. And luckily, they gave us a picture. So all we need to do is highlight that question, read and highlight the question to get to work. It says, to get from point A to point B, you must avoid walking through a pond. To avoid the pond, you must walk 34 meters south and then 41 meters east. To the nearest meter, how many meters would be saved if it were possible to walk through the pond? So I need to highlight to the nearest to the nearest meter how many meters would be saved if it was possible to walk through the pond. So step one, highlight the question. So I did step one. Okay. Step two, draw P. Which we're lucky we don't have to do this step. We have a picture already. Okay, and then step three, go ahead and start labeling your um, information if necessary. Then we're going to solve the problem. So if we look at this, it acts, it wants to know this side right here. So this is where you have to use a little thinking it. You have to decide, do I have two sides or do I need to use trig? And in this case, we're lucky. We have two sides. So no need to use trig. We can go straight to Pythagorean's theorem since this is a right triangle. So I'm going to say this is A, this is B, and this is C, which is my hypotenuse. And the others are called legs. And you can interchange A and B. So here I'm going to go A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So I'm going to do 34. And anytime you substitute into a formula, make sure you put your information in parentheses. All right. So I'm going to use my calculator to help me out. So we get... 34 squared, which is 1156, plus 41 squared, which is 1681, equals C squared. I'm going to add those two together. So we get 2837. 
equals c squared. And I don't want to know what c squared is, so I'm going to take the square root of 2837, and that's going to give me c. The inverse of something squared is to take its square root. So now I'm going to go to my calculator, and I'm going to push second, the square key to get the square root. Or if you have a scientific calculator, just push the square root symbol. And it said to the nearest meter. So I'm going to look here. This 2 doesn't make this 3 round. So this is going to be 53 meters. And the question says, how many meters would be safe if it was possible to walk through the pond? So if I could walk straight through here, it's 53 meters meters. So let me write that complete answer out. Okay, or you can write it in words. And here's this, uh, uh, um, just something interesting for you to know. The shortest distance between two points is to go diagonal. So instead of going down and then going over to get to from A to B, the shortest distance would be to go across from A to B. However, in this picture, the longest side should be the hypotenuse. Okay, so you save time going this way versus going 34 meters plus 41 meters. Okay, so what I want you to do is go ahead and try the next question on your sheet and then the next question on your sheet and this question and let's go ahead and knock out this one it says the base of the cone has a radius of six centimeters what is the slant height and the hint is do not use 110 so here's how we figured this one out first we're going to do the same thing step one Highlight question. So I'm going to take my little highlighter. Highlight question. I'm going to go ahead and highlight the hint too so I know I don't so I don't make sure, make that mistake with using what they said not to use. So it said the slant height. And the slant height would be just what it sounds like. This slanted side right here. That's what it wants to know. Okay, step two, draw a pic. Well, we're lucky. We have a picture already, so no need for this one. And then step three, solve problem. So you may need to go through and figure out whether you're going to use trig or whether you're going to use Pythagorean's theorem. So here it says the base of the cone has a radius of six centimeters which they already helped us out on that. So here's my picture here. And it wants me to find this side. So I'm going to put X right here so I can get to this side here. Well, I need an angle from somewhere. I either need an angle up here or I need an angle down here. Never, ever, ever use this angle. Well, I can get, never use the right angle. I can get this piece of the angle right here. And the reason how I can get that is because I know that this angle and this angle forms what we call a linear pair. This is a straight line and this is a linear pair. So a line should have 180 degrees. If I've already covered 110 to finish this off, to finish this off, the rest of the angle that's going to be right here, then I need to do 180 minus um, 110. Now hold on, let me write it on the other side. So right here, to get that angle, I do 180 minus 110, which is going to give me 70. So this little piece right here is 70 degrees. So I'm going to write 70 here. So now that I know the angle, I'm going to go through and label these sides since I'm in the game now. So I'm going to put my shape right there 
on 70. All right. The side across from the right angle or the slanted side is the HYP. That's your hypotenuse. The side that we're touching is the adjacent. And this side over here is the opposite that we can't touch. So now we need to solve for X. So I am going to go to my trig ratio since I only have one side. So I'm going to go so, so Katoa, or some old hood rat caught another hood rat taking off Adidas. And if I look here, then the side that I'm looking for is the hypotenuse and the side that I know is the adjacent. So I want to go and find which trig function fits this situation that I have, and that is going to be cosine. So I write this out, cosine of 70, the angle that I use to label the sides with, move this over for you, that right there, should equal adjacent over hypotenuse, so 6 over x. All right, so I'm going to go to my circle. So I get cosine of 70 right here, 6 here, and x there. So now we know that if you put your finger on the x, that's what we're solving for. Then we're going to say x equals 6 over cosine of 70. So we're going to get this in our calculator. And it said, did it say what to round to? No. So we're just going to do to the nearest uh, whole number in this case, since it didn't say. So I'm going to push alpha y equals, enter here. And I get 6 over cosine of 70, which is 17.5. And I'm going to round that over to 18. So that means this slanted height or slant height is 18 centimeters. And we did it. All right. So your turn to go ahead and knock out the next couple of ones. And let's go ahead and try this one next. It says, a ladder leans against a brick wall. The foot of the ladder is six feet from the wall. The ladder reaches a height of 15 feet on the wall. Find to the nearest degree the angle the ladder makes with the wall. So here, step one is to draw your picture. I mean, step one is to highlight the question. Okay, so it says find to the nearest degree the angle. Oops, hold on. Let me do that a little bit better. So it says find to the nearest degree the angle the ladder makes with the wall. So that's what we're trying to find. Okay, step two, draw a pick. Well, we're lucky. We got the picture already. But we can go back and underline what's important. The foot of the ladder is six feet tall, and the fact that the ladder is leaning against a brick wall is, I'm sorry, the foot of the ladder is six feet from the wall. So that's the bottom of the ladder, and then the ladder reaches the height of 15 feet on the wall. So here's our picture right here. Now step three. Solve the problem. And this is when you're going to have to go and investigate your picture. So here, I noticed that I know two sides and I need to find an angle. So therefore, I need to use my trig ratios. So I'm going to label my sides according to this angle that I need to find. So the side that I'm touching is the adjacent. The side that's slanted is the hypotenuse or across from the right angle. And the side that I can't touch is called the opposite. All right. So now, here I investigate. 
I am going to write my Sokotoa down or some old hood rat called another hood rat taking off Adidas and I have the opposite side and the adjacent side and I need to find this angle so the one that fits opposite and adjacent would be tan so I know I'm going to have tan of the angle that I'm looking for equals 6 over 15. Now I need to draw my circle so I can figure out how I'm going to find this x. So tan x equals 6 over 15. So here I'm going to cover up the tan. That's where the x is at. So in order to get that, that means x equals tan inverse of 6 over 15. And remember, guys, you can use the other trig functions, too, depending on what information you're given. So it's not going to always be tan. So here I'm going to go back to my calculator, second, and then push tan. Then I'm going to push alpha y equals, and we get 6 over 15. And there we have, I'm going to do this to the nearest, did it say? To the nearest degree. So I'm going to put the 8 makes the 1 go up, so that's going to be x equals 22 degrees. So you know this, and to find that other angle if necessary, you add this to the 90, the 22 to the 90, and then you take that sum and subtract it out of 180, and you'll get this angle right here. All right, so go ahead and complete the rest of your review, and I'll see you guys in class tomorrow. Bye.